Hello, I'm back with another video and today I want to talk about a subject which I don't think that I can actually condense down into one video so I might do two for this because there is a lot to speak about in a short amount of time and I have a short attention span so you guys probably do too. Let's get started. Um, this title is called uh, The Silent Killer because what I'm going to be talking about is depression and how depression is a silent killer. Um, depression affects a lot of men and women everywhere and the worst thing about it is a lot of people if they have depression feel as though they're weak. Like for many years when I had depression I didn't want to speak about it much and I didn't want to address it or go to therapy or anything because uh, a lot of people would say it's just uh, get over it. Um, that was like 10 years ago now so a lot has changed in those 10 years but you watching this may have even been confronted with people saying just get over it or something along those lines which is really kind of insensitive and it's not like something you can just magically make disappear even if you wanted to um if i could make my depression go or my anxiety go just like at the click of a finger i would have tried that <laughs> a lot before continuing to have the same mental illness um secondly you may have come from my last video uh that was about basically going off a uh, cytopram, um, a cold turkey and how it was really bad and yeah it was a really bad experience. Uh, since then, um, since last July, um, I started getting extremely low again and I put myself back into therapy. Um, so I've been in therapy three times now. Once was for um, grief counselling which was overdue um, by about 10 years. So grief counselling was the first set of therapy. Uh, and the second two sets of therapy were uh, CBT, which was cognitive behavioural therapy. I'm forgetting words right now, but yeah. So I put myself back in therapy last uh, year. I rung up the helpline and uh, asked if they can assist and they were very helpful and we went through a uh, kind of an assessment about my social anxiety and also depression um as well as doing that though i was finding myself extremely tired every day and i was not actually getting any work done and it was a nightmare an absolute nightmare i couldn't get out of bed and even when i did get out of bed i was continuously like i'm just gonna lay here because I have no motivation to do anything. Like I had no motivation to do things I enjoyed or things I didn't enjoy. Um, just in general, even just anything did at that point in time just didn't excite me or make me extremely like, wow, kind of thing. So uh, last July uh, or before July, I went on to a different antidepressant um, known as Prozac or in the UK we call it fluoxetine 20 milligrams. Um, I went back onto that because I just I needed to function and I needed to push myself forwards and have an extra crutch to help myself and try to see things not in the continuous mind frame that I was in. Some people do need medication, some people don't need medication. Uh, some people are on it for all their life, some people are on it for a short period of time. Uh, it's very different to each of you and I don't want anyone to feel ashamed watching this video uh, worried about having to go back on it because they are really struggling. I think when you balance out the struggles with just having a moment of relief, in this case I've taken the moment of relief to be able to feel just silence in my head for once and not a thousand thoughts or anxieties or fears. I took that option 
because I wanted to become something better than I was last year. I wanted to become proud of myself and I wanted to push forwards. Um, I'm not making excuses, I'm just saying like if you're watching this now and you might be worried about coming off, um, that's okay to be worried about coming off. It's scary and it's also scary going back on medication. But either way, as long as you are ultimately happy with the decision you make, that should be the only thing that matters. Not anyone else's opinions, not society opinions or stigmas around it. I know they're still going to affect you because it's medication and there is always the taboo about medication. Since being on Prozac myself, I have had, in the last year, four anxiety attacks. And that's it. Just four. Before not being on a medication, I was prone to a lot of anxiety and a lot of depression. And I've only actually had a few lows on this medication the last year, which is significantly different. Um, which is just crazy, because I've actually been able to do things that I wasn't able to do last year. Even with the therapy and stuff, having motivation to carry on the therapy once the therapy was finished. Because I did um, a block of, I believe, eight sessions uh, last year about CBT and then carrying on and just doing it it just makes you want to like I don't know I don't know where this video is going I think what I'm trying to say is it is very scary anxiety is very scary it's bloody terrifying it's terrifying to in itself it's the essence of being worried the essence of wanting to just crawl back in that bed it's like being in a warm bath and then the plug's just taken and you're still stuck in that bath when it's cold. But I think one of the things that can actually combat depression is speaking about it. I don't know what kind of videos this is going to be. I just thought I'd sit down and talk about my experience and I don't know, maybe, maybe you'd find some comfort in it. Maybe... You'd find some, I don't know. It's so hard to talk about depression. Cause there's so many things that can um, be the root of mental illness. Uh, but it is silent and it sucks. <laughs> And I don't know if I'll have it for the rest of my life. Um, but I know now that I can do things that make me preoccupied. Or I actually feel motivation to do hobbies or see people. Obviously I can't see anyone right now because we're in lockdown. But I don't feel in a dark hole. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, so for me, my root causes of depression were um, at school. <sighs> at school, losing, um, losing my voice at school, being bullied by people because of how I looked and I was bullied at school because I did sexual things with my best friend. He was my best friend at the time. We'd grown up together. We'd, our families were very close. We'd been, we'd go camping every single year have birthday parties every year, hang out all the time. When me and him got to around 11 or 10, sorry, um, around 11, 12, 
we started experimenting with each other with the clause that whatever happened between us would stay between us because it's very new, it's very scary and we didn't want people to find out we wanted to just explore between us and understand our bodies obviously it's a young age but what hurts is he was my best friend and once we did stuff he would go out of his way to tell everyone in school if I'd done stuff with him in graphic detail in every classroom he would stand up on a chair and tell people including the teachers the details about what happened and he got people smacking him on the back and he got popular because he thought he basically transferred to the school while this, the midst of all this was going on and he thought to be popular he would tell everybody something we'd kept between us between best friends growing up together since the age of I don't know we grew up since we were little toddlers <laughs> he thought we'd get popular by telling people sexual stuff about what was going on so he got applauded and he became in the popular group but I didn't I had people call me a slut people call me disgusting ugly a man horrible nasty a tramp I had this every day while I was in school for about five years every day I had to deny it because I felt disgusted with myself and disgusted with my body that I could trust a guy, boy with my body and that he would keep that between us but he didn't because it was hilarious it was so funny that he'd done things with a loser like me that was into her studies and a bit of a geek completely a loser that someone would do such things to something like me I hated myself every single day because of what he'd done and how sick he made me feel One of the times when we'd experimented, we hadn't, I was really worried because we hadn't used protection. I was worried I was pregnant because I was, even though it hadn't been that kind of intercourse, I was worried I was pregnant. And I told him. And he freaked out. And he didn't speak to me. At all. He just fucked off. And. He was done with that. And because he was in his popular group. He. he you know. He, he got to where he wanted to be. So he just discarded me like trash. And he'd, he'd just risen above the ranks and become the untouchable cool kid that could shout his mouth off and do all these cool sex things. And I lived with that for a really long time. I ended up self-harming 
And I'm not proud to say that. Because I didn't want to exist anymore. Because I felt ugly and I wanted to rip up my own skin. Because I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't want to do anything with anyone else because I didn't want to feel that pit of emptiness that I felt when what happened with him. And even to this day, <laughs> I have had a lot of therapy and everything, but I'm very, very scared of sharing myself with someone. Because I never want to be betrayed like that again. That's where a lot of my depression came from. That's probably one of the roots. Because there was nothing that my school did to help as well. When I went to my school about bullying, they just tried to separate me in some classes and that was the extent of what they did. They didn't take the bullies aside. They didn't speak to him. And so, yeah, I, I deal with it for five years. So, depression is a silent killer in a certain way. It can kill off who you are and it can make you ashamed of your own existence. And that's how I felt. Obviously I've had other roots to my depression, that's not the only thing. But when I went into therapy that was one of the first things we spoke about, how it all kind of spiralled out of control. And I didn't speak to hardly anyone, I only spoke to a few of my friends because I didn't want anyone else to think I was... <laughs> disgusting. And ashamed of me. Um, so yeah, this wasn't going to be like this video, I wasn't going to give really good helpful advice, but I don't think I did, I think I just cried and told you about life experiences. But the funniest thing is that what I've learned from this is if you rely on what other people think of you, it can literally tear a hole in your body that takes a lot of years to repair from and a lot of years to recover from. Um, high school fucking sucks. Bullies fucking suck. So whatever your root of depression is, I hope it's not something like that. And if it is, fuck them. And fuck people that tell you who or what you are because no one fucking knows what you are except yourself you can be whatever you want to be it's true if you want to do something you do it you have the actions and the motions i'm only just now becoming more comfortable in my skin and i'm glad i'm getting it back on track And I'm glad that I can actually share with you what that's like. Because some people go through a shit ton of bullying, a lot of people. And when they speak up, and even if they try to speak up, they don't get listened to. Um, so yeah, that was one of the root causes of my depression. And self-esteem issues. Because obviously depression leads to the self-esteem, you don't like yourself, you don't want to be in your body, and you're in that continuous cycle. Um, yeah, I think that's about it really. That's my experience of a silent killer. Um, hopefully in the next video I can be more positive in ways to deal with depression. If anyone would like a guide or tips on what I do to... Um, kick its butt. Let me know in the comments below and uh, have a good Friday.